We move on to item uh, 5.2. It's the uh, Hickins Lane Recreation Ground on Hickins Lane, Stableford in Nottinghamshire. The application is to create a 3G artificial grass pitch. Ryan, would you like to introduce the item, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, bear with me, it's going to take a little bit of time with this one. Um, first off, again, please look at your late items. Um, particular note, please, um, that Sporting England have withdrawn their objection. Now, with any sporting application, any application on former or current playing fields, the Sporting England have a right to call it in or to object on grounds of loss of open switches. They have removed their objection. Some of the parts in the report were written before this came in, so please be aware of that with your deliberation to get that far. They have suggested conditions as well. Um, there's also a public engagement event that happened recently that um, has been included in the report, but is generally very positively received. Uh, essentially, um, apologies to those of you who are fully aware of this as part of the state for down town deal work, but it's to create a 3G artificial pitch with perimeter fencing, hard standing, storage, floodlights, funds and acoustic fencing. Your best way to describe it is to have a look at page 79 onwards for the pictures, which does a far better job than me talking at you. It is linked to the wider programme of work under the state of the town deal project um, with the new pavilion and the mugger on the site, sorry, multi-use games area on the site, um, already approved. It's part of a wider programme facilities provided for local people um, and the health benefits associated there too. Um, and the impact of the scheme will be partially mitigated by abundant acoustic fence and landscaping. Uh, members, I ask you to go to page to paragraph 6.5, 6.7 as well, with regards to the health benefits, and they're linked to the National Planning Policy Framework in this regard. Um, various points that I'll cover. The pitch is available to be booked by all, and whilst the Staple Town Football Club will be using it, um, it's not exclusive to them. There is a partial loss of the playing pitch, but Staple residents benefit and are well served open space across Staple Town itself. It's not considered this partial loss in formal space is particularly significant in that regard because per head of population they've got a lot of open space there. There's a need for artificial pitches or weather pitches in Broxtow, which are called the national guidance. Um, we have found, finally, it took a bit of time, a new site for the cricket club. One of the conditions you may recall from when this came before you before was that we basically need to find the cricket club a new home. That has happened up near the field farm scheme, so that's sorted. Um, I repeat, Sport England have removed their objection um, and, the and their comments covered both the issues of this pitch and the multi-use games area there as well. They did originally object to the scheme, but follow a clarification of a few points, they're, they're happy, which does mean if permission is granted tonight in line with recommendation, we can grant permission here and now as opposed to waiting for them to call it in potentially. There are no issues sequentially in terms of town centre development and similar. Um, this did come in before the changes to B&G with regards to 10%, but either way, there was a 10% improvement in B&G across the site. Um, I do acknowledge it's impossible to hide the pitch, but careful consideration has been given to its siting, including trees and Hickens Lane, hedging, bun planting and similar, all with the idea to try and um, reduce its impact to some degree. There's been noise assessment carried out. More details in your report from 6.3 um, onwards. But essentially, um, the noise assessment with the acoustic fence installation has come to the conclusion that it's not intrusive and no observed as adverse effect following the noise surveys. Similar situation regard to lighting and lighting spill with um, floodlights. Um, there's no adverse impact on the immunity of neighbours. Uh, that's not to say there's an impact, it's to say no adverse impacts on their immunity. Again, both the noise and the lighting are conditioned as part of the recommendation. Parking, which is always raised, um, 88 spaces and 20 cycle spaces considered acceptable, which is a significant increase in what's already there. Um, we have no other issues. So overall, to conclude, in planning terms, we believe the benefits far outweigh the cons, and with the significant health benefits and community benefits overall, recommend approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much.
There are three public speaking on this item. Uh, the first one is uh, Jonathan Little on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Jonathan, if you could go to the microphone. Uh, you have... It's not on. I think, I think the, the, the mic is actually over there at the end of the table. Jonathan, from when you start speaking, you have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Can I just start by saying, we as officers, um, we didn't invent this project. We are change agents. Uh, we are delivering what the people of Stapleford said they wanted in the 2019-20 investment plan, when that was developed through extensive consultation with, with the whole community of Stapleford. The project is critically important for three reasons. <clears throat> Firstly, when we submitted the town investment plan, we were asked to reduce the overall level of funding by DLUC, the government department. This new project brings in an additional, an additional uh, £1.3 million into Stapleford that wouldn't otherwise have come in. So in some ways goes to replacing that funding that we lost. Secondly, um, the, the presence of the, the mugger unashamedly makes the overall community pavilion and associated facilities there far more financially sustainable. It is better for the borough, better for the residents, and better for the whole community. Thirdly, and I think this is really, really important, the community pavilion and the mugger and this 3G pitch is the flagship project for Stapleford Town Deal a real game changer, and even more so um, when, when you add in things like the FA, uh, extending FA support and the Stephen Gerrard Academy that are coming in. A couple of more points I just wanted to make. Do remember, this is a council-led project uh, with the Town Deal Board. We're not just going to trouser the planning permission and pass it over to a developer. We will, me and my team will continue to work with everyone, with stakeholders, residents and users to improve this project as it moves forward and make it the best possible version of the project that it can be. Where we still have issues to resolve, we will do so. We will uh, engage the, with creativity and the support of many to resolve for the good of all. The project will take uh, uh, ambitions for, will, will also dovetail with our ambitions for sustainable travel road improvements, and working alongside other Stapleford Town Deal projects. It will act for, with uh, due deference to uh, place improvement and uh, will help multiple games. Seconds. Finally, the town, the football club has asked me to suggest that with 32 teams of male, female age groups from 2 to 56, 500 players, this facility is crucial. It will improve uh, the space that was otherwise previously had antisocial behaviour project problems and um, will not, not just benefit Stapleford Town, but everybody. That's and your time. I commend the project to the committee. <laughs> Thank you. Many thanks. Our next speaker is Craig Woods. Uh, objected. Time starts. All right now. <laughs> yeah. Get, right, you've got. Chair so I can time you. <laughs> okay, as soon as you start speaking, you've got three minutes. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I've got to be fast. There, I think there were thirty-four objections to this from residents. Of uh, I don't know how many were consulted. I think it's about forty or fifty. It doesn't say in the report, but it's a very high percentage. So 
won't waste my time because it's about five seconds per person who wrote into object. So I don't want to let them down. But I do want to say that I think it's very odd to have someone from the Stapleford Town Board on the meeting. I, I, I don't think the rationale that you haven't been to any meetings yet is good enough for me. It's, it's a multi-million pound project giving it just to the football club at the expense of residents, so I don't think it's all appropriate. But okay, that's your decision to make. Um, there's some big mistakes that you can make here. You can think that this is a huge site, that they're just taking a part of it and leaving the rest as open access. That's just not true. The reality on the ground is that a lot of that that is left over is underwater for five or six months of the year. So in the southwest side, it's just, it's just a swamp. Um, similarly, a lot of it is just a swamp. Basically, everything left over is just a swamp for about six months of the year. This is the good part of the park. If you look at the open access um, statement, um, that was one of those documents, it includes such things as the car park as open space, which obviously it isn't. It includes um, the pavilion as open space. It includes actually a road off Church Lane as open space. And it looks like it even includes some of the new build as open space. So this just needs to be redone and reassessed properly because the biggest important, the most important factor here is the lack of open space for residents. It affects hundreds of people and that's why we've had a petition with upwards of 600 people objecting to it. The other big mistake is just to confuse what's good for Stapleford Town Football Club with what's good for Stapleford. And <laughs> I think that's just obvious and it's really worrying that it seems like we've got two people from the council on the board of that football club. There are two football clubs as well in the town. I think it's really inappropriate to be voting on it. Um, so that's the biggest issue and affects hundreds of people, not just the immediate vicinity, but I'm directly opposite it. The biggest impact there is the, the floodlights, 15 metres tall, at up to 10 o'clock every night. The noise impact is going to be huge. And the biggest problem with the thing right now the application right now is that noise assessment assesses a football match. It doesn't Seven. assess, it does not assess the stand. So the stand has gone in late, it's for a hundred people. The noise assessment makes no mention of a stand. It's like you've been told that you've got a roller coaster park going opposite you and they've assessed the ice cream stand. It needs to be redone. Um, <laughs> there is a way to do this. I love the idea of Stapleford Town doing well, but this is not. This is not it. This is going to remove facilities. It's not going to reduce them. And the noise assessment needs to be redone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Many thank you, Craig. Our next speaker is the ward member, Councillor Catherine Harlow. Councillor, if you could go to the mic, please. You have five minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, gentlemen of the public gallery. Um, yes, as you mentioned, I am one of the ward councillors for Stapleford South East, which does include Hickens Lane Recreation Grounds. Um, as Craig's pointed out, this has caused a lot of discussion with the residents of Stapleford, rightly so. You know, it's a big thing that's going to impact the town. Um, and I just wanted to uh, bring up some of the things that, you know, have been discussed and that may be discussed by the committee. So there's been a discussion that it will lead to the loss of grass area. Grass regularly mowed is very species poor and there aren't many types of plants or insects and other mini beasts that use it as a habitat. But this will be more than compensated for by a 10% increase in biodiversity value for the site of the pitch, which Ryan has mentioned and a lot of the points that I make have already been mentioned, but I do think they, they bear worth repeating um, this evening. Some have also pointed out the loss of dog walking facilities. Well, since the various towns deal projects were first put forward, some of the staple town councillors have been keeping an eye on the number of walkers space using it at any time. Uh, so that is being monitored and the space still available on the park will be more than sufficient for the largest number of people seen using it to walk their dogs at any one time. And the maps show that there will still be a lot of grass and availability <coughs> for people to do so. There is a, a lot of talk that lots think it's being done for one sports club to the detriment of everyone else. I, uh, I have heard that a lot from people who've got in touch with me about this, this development. This pitch won't be just for the sole use of Stapleford Town Football Club. It will be a public asset. 
run by Liberty Leisure, it will be an important part of Stapleford and it will be used by some charities and people will be able to hire it out just like any other Liberty Leisure facilities. And as I said, it will be an important part on the education on offer through the Stephen Gerrard Academy, which is going to bring some incredible pull. I mean, we've seen people who have been interested from Sheffield and further apart, so that's going to bring so much to the, to the town. And as I said, it will be a great resource for the whole community. Stapleford Town Football Club is a brilliant club and so many people are involved and anything that can be done to support their development should be encouraged. There are over 500 players in 32 teams, which, which Jonathan mentioned, including 32 teams, including four girls and ladies teams, children's, youth, senior and veterans teams. The senior men's team is now at a level where they will be and the FA Vars competition. One more promotion and there will be FA Cup matches in Stapleford. That's incredible. This will do huge things for the town and the borough, but they need the access to the new pitch for this. And this pitch will mean that Stapleford Town Football Club will be able to offer facilities to wheelchair teams and those with other levels of varying abilities. So even more people will be included. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. In order to open the debate, I'm going to move the item. Uh, can I have a seconder, please? I'll second. Thank you very much. Would anyone uh, like to speak, please? Councillor Marshall. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, What's, mo what's most important about this application is, and um, the, the reason, of course, Mr Little was presenting on behalf of the council because of the statutory responsibility of the council as the applicant to, to present to this, but it kind of gives the, you know, the initial impression that um, this is somehow a council-led um, and a council-imposed um, uh, project. Um, and pretty much nothing could be further from the truth. Um, this has been one of the best examples I've ever seen, certainly in my time uh, as, as a councillor, of a community initiative um, engaging um, hundreds of people, engaging using officers, councillors, uh, MP influence, um, residents and volunteers to come together to try and deliver, which is, it is no hyperbole or understatement, what could be one of the most important investments in Broxtow um, for a generation and uh, Councillor Harlow uh, explains brilliantly about how um, this facility of course won't just be a facility for the purpose of Stapleford Town Football Club but it will also be a facility for residents it will also offer things different to football and that was kind of one of the important tenets of the entire project at the start um, so it's completely inclusive and it will complement and, and round off really the pavilion and multi-use games area stuff that is um, that has already been approved. The cherry on the cake of all this is the hugely, hugely important um, uh, partnership with the Stephen Gerrard Academy, which cannot be underestimated. Not only is it um, uh, a kudos to the authority to be one of, I think, the only sites outside of the North West um, that Stephen Gerrard sees um, uh, uh, opportunity and wants to be involved in as, an, as, as the uh, lead ambassador for that organisation. But it, but it, but it includes, um, it helps fill a gap which has been sadly lacking in Broxtow for a number of years and that's post-16 uh, education, which when you talk about skills and training and opportunities for young people in our communities, it's a, just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that that will bring to people who might not necessarily have had a pathway um, to progress that is, that is traditional through um, secondary education or indeed uh, college, other colleges and universities. And I just think the combination of all of those things just provide um, something that we must be part of um, and we must be singing um, from from the rooftop. So I'm absolutely um, over the moon that this is now coming to fruition. This is another domino or another piece of the jigsaw which will be putting the club 
um, and putting the community of Stapleford um, onto bigger and better things. The numbers of volunteers who have given their, frankly, their lives tirelessly to ensure that this project listens and responds to um, community needs, um, helps balances concerns that residents have had, has been remarkable. And we've touched upon some of those issues around um, the cricket club. And of course, we don't want to see other sports lose out at the at the um, at the cost of of this this facility. And that's why it's brilliant that the pit lane solution, which is almost like a natural amphitheatre anyway for cricket, um, will be part of the solution there. And it's just a uh, a brilliant um, option, which the project uh, and people involved with the project have been committed to resolving. As Councillor Harlow then says, this will be the platform for even more better things to the town of Stapleford. And when you've got leisure centres closing up and down the country, when you've got facilities closing up and down the country, and whatever you think, whatever your politics are, I don't think that's going to improve, by the way, uh, after the general election. Whatever you think, there is a significant opportunity here which must be grasped, and we should be using this facility as the anchor, not just for Stapleford, by the way, but the anchor for development and blueprint and investment across all of our towns in, in the borough as well. And if we can use this model, then we'll only go on to better things. So I'm fully in support of this chair and I look forward to the spade going into the ground as soon as possible. Thank you very much indeed. Anyone else would like to uh, make a comment? Councillor Skinner? Yeah, I'm absolutely in favour of this project, but um, can I have some reassurance that um, we will future-proof it in case um, 3G gets phased out like it is in Scotland and other areas in Europe um, <coughs> because it's not considered very safe. Have we got plans to make sure that ours will be okay should that happen? Thank you. Thank you. Can you answer that? Yeah, sorry, I want to. Um, we're going to be part of the... Uh, Liberty Leisure will be part of the board that runs it. Um, I, don't, I can't answer that question fully, but for my um, extracurricular activities, not plan activities, um, these um, multi-use areas and pitches are updated all the time, and you basically have like a 10-use or 20-use, and, and they're getting better. Um, and you used to have essentially sand-dressed astroturfs. You now get water-based pitches or yeah. multi pitches, etc. So over time, you renew them in the 10-year lifespan. I would imagine, because we're part of Management for Liberty Leisure, like they do with any, any sporting project, you have a sinking fund or you have issues such as that to make sure it improves over time. I know there were some surveys done elsewhere nationally on some of the impacts in terms of the environment, in terms of the uh, plastic nature of some of the pitches and the um, sort of materials gone into the pitches versus the benefit it gives to the health benefits of fitness. And the health benefits of fitness significantly outweighs the negativities of the picture itself. But um, certainly I think with regards to the management board of it, they would um, they would be on board with it in terms of making sure that it's future-proofed and we have a programme of 10-year, 20-year recycling and upgrading the pitches. Um, the fact that we're involved in it as a council of Liberty Leisure, arm's length, I'm sure that would happen. Um, that's as much as I'm saying it, I think, from my understanding. Thank you very much. Any more comments, please? Councillor Pringle. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, there's a couple of... Well, the first thing I want to ask is, uh, can we have a look at the, um, the item on para 614 on page 63? It talks about uh, the terms of displacement of the cricket club. This matter was addressed by planning condition under planning permission 23... Complete zero 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 fifty one. I have asked about that after having looked at the planning documents, and there was a document submitted. Well, it wasn't a document submitted; it was an answer to a document that was made by one of the the planning officers. I would like to see what the document was that produced the answer, because that that's that's quite important to the people of Trowel. What 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 did the person? ask that was presented to the officer 
the officers included it in the pack, but the question or the letter that was that produced that answer is nowhere to be seen. What was that letter? And that was that was produced on the, the letter was written on the fourteenth of April. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. If I'm honest, um, because a letter saying... was sent by a trainee manager yeah. of Jonathan's department right. to the planning department, and the planning department said yes. It's now, as it says here, was addressed, and this condition has been approved. What was the letter that got the condition approved, and why was it submitted by a trainee manager of Jonathan's department? Because that's the, that's the person that got the answer. I feel it's quite important. If we don't know, you need to call us. I'll get our. Yeah, you need to. I'll consult with someone we else. Need, that. We need. That, that's the first thing. The second thing is in that same paragraph, it actually says this condition has been approved, and a new facility within Stapleford has been agreed for the cricket club. The new facility is not in Stapleford; it's in Travel. The Boundary Brook is the, the boundary line between Stapleford and Trowell. This is proposed in Trowell. The, the next thing is, uh, it was mentioned there's plenty of engagement with people, and people have been informed about what's going on and all that sort of thing. I'm the ward councillor, Lydia is the ward councillor for Trowell, Osworth, Cottle and Trowell. Trowell Parish Council were never consulted, and we found out I found out while I was on holiday in America through a Facebook page that was put out by Stapleford Cricket Club saying that this, this cricket, uh, we, at last we've got a cricket pitch and uh, with lots of work done by councillors and all sorts of other people, no consultation with anyone from Trowell and it was great for Stabo and it's now that it's in Stabo that's fantastic. How, how, how did that group manage to put, where did they get the information from? To put out that Facebook message when nobody in trial knows anything about it. So that's 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 another point. Um, Greg mentioned that the domino is all in place. I think the domino fell over when it got to trial. And uh, you, you've addressed all the community needs. Now, if we move on to the community of trial, the the the, the pitch or the place that the that has been uh, purchased was actually offered to Trial Parish Council. Now there's a bit of a, 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 a problem happened there in that um, I mentioned it to the developer at a meeting in uh, February that we were still interested and the director of the company unfortunately didn't talk to the managing director of the company and they everybody believed that we had no further interest in that field. And what could have happened if we had had that interest in that field, Trial Parish Council could have bought the land for £1.50. So I don't know how much Broxley Borough Council paid for it, but we could have bought it for £1.50. So that's another point. The other issue is that the field that you purchased is flooded 365 days of the year. And it's also... The only bit of the brook that provides alleviation to flooding in trial because when they built the field farm estate that's now five foot higher than the brook so the only place it can the, the floodplain can go is into this pitch or this field that you've bought to put a cricket pitch on now the other thing is when we talked to, to mr westerman who initially offered us the land for a pound and we had a meeting when it was handed over from Mr. Western, Westerman to Mr. James Smith of Peveril. Um, Mr. Westerman said, if you want to put, because there was talk then about putting a football pitch on it. To put a football pitch onto there, we were told three years ago, would cost a million pounds. So a cricket pitch in the same area, because it's the same sort of thing, nice grass that you can play on, I think that also is going to cost a lot of money. We went, it, you mentioned the fact that the, uh, the, the meeting uh, last Thursday was well attended and most people um, enjoyed it. The people of Trowell that went didn't enjoy it because they've got no information. What we keep on getting told is it's, 
it's commercially sensitive, so we can't tell you anything about it. So you know, it's it's just what the way the way I feel, and the way the residents of Trial feel is that what's happened is a piece of land has been bought, which is in Trial, but according to your look, Ryan, you still think it's in Stapleford. It is not in Stapleford. It's in Trial. It's definitely in trial. And something else, when the Stapleford town deal was first set up in 2019, I approached, and she knows I'm going to say this, I approached the chief executive and said, as the uh, as, as a bit of land here sort of is almost in trial, could we get some of this, the, town the town fund to help with the flood problems we have in trial? And she said no. The money is to be spent in Stapleford only. This is now being built in trial. So there's lots of questions there that lots of people need to be answered. And I don't think at this point that this discussion this evening could go any further until all these answers are put forward. Certainly as far as the, the residents of trial are concerned. David. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I remind the committee that we actually consider these applications on planning grounds? Because I've just listened to uh, 10 minutes of Councillor Pringle, who hasn't raised a single planning issue uh, there. Uh, the fact that he didn't buy the land is irrelevant. Uh, the fact that it's in trowel uh, that the cricket club will play in is irrelevant. What we are looking at here is a planning application on uh, Hickens Lane in Stapleford. Uh, we are told that because there have been arrangements made for the cricket club, then Sport England have withdrawn their objection. That is the only planning issue uh, in regard to that. So there is no longer an objection from Sport England. There may be questions that Councillor um, Pringle wishes to raise, but they are not for this committee. And it would be a complete red herring for us to waste any more time on them. Uh, what we have to look at is the application that is before us which is not about the cricket club it's about uh, putting uh, a 3g uh, sports pitch football pitch on hickens lane when my daughter was younger she played for local football clubs and it was patently obvious to any parent involved in any uh, sport that there's a real lack of uh, floodlit facilities a real lack of all weather facilities within Broxtow clubs were falling over themselves to get the few uh, that there were uh, and it ended up with kids playing on really unsuitable uh, surfaces Molly moved on to play at a much higher standard so we didn't have to worry about that anymore but for many kids uh, that problem remains now that there just aren't enough facilities for primarily footballers but not only footballers in Broxtow. What we have here is a step towards solving that problem uh, and so in principle I'm all in favour of this scheme. That then raises two questions. One the impact of uh, the floodlights on the neighbours and to the impact of noise on the neighbours. Uh, the floodlights we are told explicitly in the report are baffled so that the light only falls on the pitch and will not uh, impact on the neighbours uh, and so I'm satisfied with that. The noise, um, if you live next to sports facilities there is always going to be some noise. Uh, frankly it is better than the noise that we've had there in the past of uh, kids knocking down the trees and uh, um, causing all sorts of mayhem on the park. Hopefully some of that will also uh, stop. And because the stands are facing and away from the residents, I don't think it's likely that there is going to be any unacceptable noise at all. Um, I was also quite surprised to hear that uh, um, the remaining parts of the field were uh, waterlogged effectively, uh, swampy, because I've walked across all of those pitches on many occasions. I've run the line on those pitches, I've refereed on those pitches, um, and 
uh, I've never encountered that as a problem. So I can't see any reason not to grant planning permission uh, for this, and so I'll be supporting this application. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Councillor Bullock. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, on page 63 on point 613, you'll see that there's currently two existing full-sized artificial pitches, uh, one at Eastwood Community FC and Kimberley, um, and there's a shortfall in the south. Now, this, looking at the plans, this looks very similar to the facility at Eastwood uh, with an artificial pitch next to a park. And I've got to say that is a fantastic facility for the local community at Eastwood. So. If this is going to be uh, delivered to a similar sort of thing in, in Stapleford, then I think that's going to be a fantastic benefit to the community there. So I'll be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ball. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> well, I, I think when there is a sporting facility put in the borough, I think we should all really be very pleased about it because at the end of the day, it's it. We've, we've got to have this health and well-being feeling and more people that are involved in sport, the better, in my opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to see that. Um, I, I really wanted to know, looking at the, at the uh, map, where, whereabouts is the mugger going to be? I know it's been approved. Whereabouts is it going to be on there? Can you tell me, anybody? To the south west of the pitches southwest is that Southwest. up there or is it down there down here is it going to be near pro uh, residents because i do have i mean i do think you've got to consider residents as far as noise is concerned particularly when people as i always say have lived there for an awful long time um i know i'm not really a miserable old lady please don't think i am but I have to say, we've now got a mug there near, quite clear to where near where I live. And in the dark nights of uh, March, I could hear this. I thought, somebody's trying to break into my house. I was actually quite frightened. I went round the house to make sure everything was okay. And then I thought, well, I'd better go upstairs and see if there's anything happening up there because they could still hear this. And I thought, ah, oh, it was the floodlit mugger. And it's the ball that they kick onto the fence. And it does make a noise. It really does. I'm, I'm sorry to have to say that to you. And that's the only thing that would concern me. I'm, I'm quite sure I wouldn't want neighbours to, to feel like that because... I didn't like it when I was sitting in my little front room and thought, oh, what's going on here? Um, and I do know, I think I do know this one because my grandson plays uh, cricket and I think the um, the cricket club in Stapleford were quite upset about them losing their thing. So I do hope, and I know it'll perhaps come back to us, that the cricket in Trow will go ahead and you will, it will be encouraging <coughs> cricket playing and that there will be facilities, a pavilion and all those sort of things that cricket play, you know, the cricket teams want. And it's not only the local cricket team, it's when they have visitors that come, they want it to be there, they want showers and everything else. So all in all, I think we've got to embrace all these um, sporting things, not against them at all. But I do feel that you should look at the impact it may have on residents with noise and uh, and the cricket clubs. Definitely in trial. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Philip? Yeah, thank you, um, Chairman. The first point I would make that uh, the comments that Councillor Pringle made are perfectly valid part of the discussion because 6.14 talks about planning conditions and the relocation of the cricket facility as being part of the planning conditions. This is the planning committee and therefore it is perfectly valid for him to raise those issues and they are serious issues because he's not expanded on the problems that may well be caused by the relocation under the planning conditions of the cricket club to that site regarding flooding 
uh, which is already a problem, and any development of that site, uh, cricket site could well increase flooding in Trowell. That has not been mentioned. So he was perfectly in order and quite properly raised that. I think there are a number of concerns to be raised or to be considered as far as this report and proposal uh, is concerned. Let's be clear that the main thrust of this proposal is to provide a new ground and new facilities for Stapleford Town Football Club. That really is the top and bottom of it. And the others are ads on. Now, whether you want to give up a, a public recreation ground to provide a home, a, a, a home ground for Stapleford Town Football Club, well, that's the decision that you will make. But it's no good saying, well, there's always noise from these. People that go and live there should expect some noise. Well, when you move to an area, you assess what noise is likely to be generated from the existing facilities. You don't anticipate when you move into a property around a, uh, a recreation ground uh, that a new, a new football ground is in effect going to be built. So that is, it is simply not fair to say that sort of thing. And when you look at paragraph 6.40, the noise assessment concludes that the development, including appropriate noise control measures, would potentially be noticeable. Interesting word, potentially. The noise would potentially be noticeable. Of course it will be noticeable. And Councillor Ball has described it admirably. Noticeable but not intrusive. I think you indicated, Councillor Ball, that the noise was quite intrusive. It is, exactly. It is intrusive. Intrusive to such an extent that at Greasley Sports and Leisure Centre, this council issued a noise abatement order to control the noise that was causing disturbance, being intrusive to the residents that live around it. And as far as the lighting is concerned, we have just been given assurances from one member that the light's only going to shine down on the pitch and nowhere else. But that's not quite what it says in the report. What it says is that um, any light spill, so it's admitting there will be light spill, not going straight down onto the ground. There will be light spill, but it'll be kept to a low intensity, therefore it's all right. Um, and it wouldn't have an adverse effect on the living conditions of neighbouring properties. Uh, well, you, you make that judgement, but clearly, if there is light spill, it is going to have an effect on adjacent properties. But all of these issues are being sidelined and just dismissed as being mere trivia. But when you have to live with that sort of thing, then uh, it's, uh, it's not trivia. It's important. It affects your quality of life. And that is an important planning consideration. We're told that there's huge local support for it. I looked, as I always do, at um, consultations. And if we look on page 59, uh, consultations, 5.9.1 talks about resident comments. Residents' comments, public consultation, 35 objections, three letters of support. 35 objections, three letters of support. And what was the phrase there that was used by one speaker? I wish I sorted out my notes in the right order. Uh, positively received. It's be, the proposal's been positively received. Well, you've only had 35 objections and three letters of support. Your idea of positively received is not necessarily mine. And I happen to be looking at an article in the uh, Nottingham Post. I was being very old-fashioned and reading a printed version of it, Chairman, at County Hall today. So I couldn't join you on your, uh, your visits. Not to simply reading the post there. I was there for a meeting. And I did take a copy of it. Uh, and then I've left it in the car, about this, this public meeting, or whatever you want to call it, this public consultation, and it was a litany of complaints and objections. 
there wasn't any evidence in that report. And all right, I know those reports can be slanted and be made newsworthy, I accept that. But there was no indication <coughs> of any public positive being positively received at all. And the final point I would make is you're selling it on the grounds that it's going to be available to the public. Going to be great. It's not really for Stapleford Town Football Club. They will use it, but it's going, it's going, to, be, it's going to be available to the members of the public. Now, we're told, and I think it was one of the speakers who said, that Stapleford Town have got 32 teams of all shapes and sizes. Now, if you've got 32 teams, how much time is there going to be available for other members of the public to use these facilities? And in that section, which talks about the use of it being available, uh, and I think that comes under from 6.8 onwards, there is no indication in the report that any agreement has been reached. And... Uh, Mr. Dawson tells us it will all be managed effectively by Liberty Leisure, so we needn't to worry. But there's no indication there as to what agreement has been reached with Liberty Leisure as to how much time and what facilities will be available for the general public. And that is something that I would have thought ought to have been before this planning committee before any decision is made on it, quite frankly. And lastly, and I said lastly before, but I suddenly thought of something else. We, ha we have this uh, last minute item where miraculously Sport England have removed their objection. Uh, but they are wanting um, conditions being put on. One, to ensure that a new cricket playing facility is implemented, well, I presume you'll argue that that's going to take place, although it's Stapleford Cricket Club, it's going to be relocated to Trowell, despite assurances that, it would, uh, that, that a suitable venue would be found in Stapleford. It may, they, may have to, uh, they may have to don diving suits to play cricket, but nevertheless, uh, that's going to be there. That There will be a trans transitional cricket playing facilities are provided. Um, I don't see any reference to that in the report. So you're going to put that on as a condition, but we have no detail about it. Community use agreement, well, I've already spoken about that. There isn't one, as, I can, as far as I can see, but I'm sure in summing up, we will, be, uh, we will be told what that community use agreement is. And the appropriate design of the artificial grass, grass pitch. The artificial grass pitch is secured. Well, I'm sure that won't be too much of a problem. I think there's a huge, a whole raft of issues that should be resolved satisfactorily for members of this committee, members of the public in particular, that are going to be affected by this development. You're not being fair to them, and I think we're being led down the garden path, and it's an all-weather garden path from what I can tell. Thank you. Anyone else want to make any comment? Thank you. Uh, it, again, it's, it's just been out, pointed to me about the late items. It said the engagement was uh, was well received. Um, I was there. And I was asking questions of the young man who was part of, uh, I think a lady's name is Sam, that's the, the senior the senior officer. And uh, all the trial residents were asking the same questions, but we didn't get any, res any answers at all because what they kept on saying to us was, we can't give you any answers because it's commercially sensitive. So how, come, how can you have a presentation telling people about what's happening? And one of the things that we, we were invited to go there was to listen about the cricket pitch and when we got there they couldn't tell us anything but they said well we don't know we, we can't do anything about it until the flood engineers that we're, we're, we're going to employ 
tell us that it's actually fit to be used. So, you know, I, I mean, I understand exactly what David's saying about it not being a, a planning thing, but the, the whole thing, as far as the cricket pitch is concerned, I think what's happened is we've come, we've pulled the rabbit out of the hat and said, we've got a cricket pitch here. That's what, that's, that will satisfy Sports England. Sports England don't know the condition of the place that's going to be used. I think if they realise what, what this rabbit was that's been pulled out of the hat, they wouldn't be giving the permission they're given. So I think, again, and I'd still like to see the letter that created the comment which allowed it to become part of this agreement. That's, that's nowhere to be seen. Where, where, where's the letter from the management trainee that was sent to the planning department and where's the answer? Look, I know the answer. He said, You're it's okay. You're what you've already said now. I mean, yeah. you've said so that. I'd you, still like to see that letter. You, you're just yeah. looking at yeah. new things that you've discovered. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're going over uh, yeah. old ground, but, but which, I want we, to see which we've covered. In fact, I'm sure David Watts has covered that. We're talking about uh, no, you didn't. Vicky's I, Lane I, Recreation. He didn't, he didn't answer the, the letter. We haven't seen the letter. I, I, I know nothing about the letter to be quite honest. Are you happy to come back on a few of those points? Um, Please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll do my best to keep it to planning matters because we're at the planning committee, after all. Um, the, the letter referring to, it's not a letter, the condition was a cricket location plan which we received. Condition discharges are dealt with by the, um, my team and, and in the planning authority. We're not, we don't share them widely. Um, with regards to the condition, um, with regards to the permission on 2351 Reg 3, it talked about finding a new location for cricket pitch. That's been achieved, we've done that. End of discussion, as far as I'm concerned, because the condition's been it doesn't say that in the condition. It says the condition. Says that on this page. I know it says this on this page, um, but the condition so itself. Wrong, is it? Um, it says in there with the facility in Stapleford. The condition we've checked because I was checking my colleagues actually says find a new location for cricket pitch. Um, so whether we should have put Stapleford there or not, the six point one four we can discuss later. However, the condition has been complied with, so we're happy in planning grounds. Um, with regard to the community use agreement the condition on the plan is there to cover the issue with the community use agreement. Um, there won't be 32 yes, teams... With respect, Chairman, my question was, what is this community... We haven't got it yet. It's been oh, conditioned. You, you haven't got it? No, that's why it's been well, conditioned. We don't, what, we, don't, we don't know what the format of that condition is going... of those conditions are going to be. You're asking us to pass, or you're asking the committee to pass uh, a, a planning application, and you don't know what the conditions are. Councillor, uh, Councillor Owen, uh, I, I did say in my opening speech that we do ask that people are respectful, um, and um, respectful, I'm and allow everyone to express their view without any interruption. I think uh, interruption uh, is your case. Please let him finish what he's got to say. Um, the condition, I think it's condition 11, I shall check. Um, for, but essentially, there's a condition that covers the community use agreement is there. Um, in the plan, um, condition six, page 73. So yes, we're asking permission to be granted subject to conditions in the same way with, I think it's pretty much any condition, unless a respective one is conditional. So we're asking you to um, approve permission in use of the community use agreement. Um, paragraph 6.38 of the report talks about enhanced materials um, with regards to mitigating the impact of noise. I referred issue about that Councillor Watts referred to both the issue of noise and lighting, both experts have looked at it and said it's okay. I have not said anywhere, nor has anyone else said anywhere, there will not be any impact. We have said the impact is acceptable in the meantime grounds. So there's a difference. Um, and the other point to be made there is that whilst of our 32 teams, I think someone said they won't get sole use of it. Um, I'm now heavily involved in my um, son's local football team. Others, they don't use the pitches all the time, they have all the time. So it doesn't necessarily mean they use voice pitch. This is a community for all. Um, I won't go into any other grounds because I think they're covering issues that aren't related to this plan application. Um, with regards to the condition related to cricket, that's been satisfied. Only I would say is the English Cricket Board have been fully involved with this from the word go and are happy with the proposals we've come up with and are fully supportive. Thank you. Okay, are they happy? Are they happy that you've found somewhere? Uh, is that, is that are the, they happy is, is that, that you've found chair? something? Is that through the chair? Yes, please. Or, or are you yeah. just interrupting? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I just, I just think that. Sorry, Chair, but it just that, that it just the, the, what, what Ryan has said is 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 not wholly correct because the English Cricket Board are happy that pitch has been found, but nobody knows now where this pitch is. 
because this piece, this document on page 63 says it's within Stapleford. It is not within Stapleford. And if it's not within Stapleford, then the money can't be spent from the town fund. Because that's what I was told in 2019. That was a condition of the town fund that the money had to be spent in Stapleford. Oh, so I'll have one point. Um, the money has to be spent within the Stapleford town deal boundary. That is not safe for the two are different because also. Stapleford boundary, though, and so, Stapleford boundary. No, yes, listen, listen, right. Councillor Pringle, please listen to what I'm saying. The Stapleford town deal boundary, not Stapleford boundary, not Trow boundary, not Orsworth boundary, not any other boundary, the Stapleford teal boundary has to be spent in that. This will work. We initially looked at another site nearby, which is in the Stapleford town boundary, and that works as well. So we're, we're where an English cricket board are happy. They know the location, the pitch, they know where it is, they're happy with the pitch where it's been proposed. Um, so that condition, as far as I'm concerned, is satisfied. So it's not proud. So, as long as the club. So the, the club are happy, everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. So. Everybody is not happy. <laughs> I went, I went well, you're, you're, you're allowed to show that when, when we go to the vote. I think uh, we've got enough now. We've, we've had enough uh, debate on it. Um, Gentlemen, gentlemen. Sorry, Chair. Can I speak through you again? No, sorry. <laughs> we, 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 we finished. We, we've done all that now. I think we've had enough on it. We yeah. need to come to it's some decision now. It's about consultation. Nobody was consulted. Excuse me. Thank you. Right. Uh, everyone, uh, not necessarily happy uh, that they've made their comments. We're going to move to the vote. The recommendation is to approve planning permission as it appears on pages 71 to 76 of the agenda. Can I see all those in favour? Please show. And me. And against. Abstentions. Thank you. I can confirm that this recommendation is carried. Thank you very much.